Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, first, I want to thank uh, B&H and, and x -Rite, um for inviting me and for making this lecture happen. Um, my name is Alino Karuchi. I was uh, born and raised in Israel, Jerusalem in 1971 and moved to New York when I was 24. Um, I am a fine artist. I'm represented by Edwin Howe Gallery and I've been showing my work worldwide. I'm also shooting for magazines and teaching in the MFA program of School of Visual Arts. And I'm also a mother of twins, boy and girl twins. They're 14 years old. Um, I'm going to go through different bodies of work today um, and then open uh, to questions. So let me start. So as I said, I was born in Israel, and I was um, in the arts from a very young age. I was playing the piano and studied theater. Um, but it was only when I discovered photography that I suddenly fell in love. I think I fell in love with photography before I fell in love with the men. So it was really my first love. Um, it started just one afternoon. I had nothing to do. I took my father's camera. He was an amateur photographer, black and white photography. And he had an old Canon. I mean, it's old now. It wasn't old then. And I didn't know what to photograph. And I wandered into my mother's bedroom. And she woke up from an afternoon nap. And I took a picture of her. And something very special happened <laughs> in this moment. Actually, I have this picture here. So this is the first picture I ever took. I'm 15. My mom is 35. Um, uh, so first of all, I was lucky to have a mother, a typical Jewish mother, who thought that everything her kids are doing is wonderful and weird. Geniuses and all this things that mothers think. And she really opened up to me. Um, she gave herself to the process. Um, and I began to take more pictures of her, which also helped me to deal with. My mother was very beautiful, very glamorous. I was an ugly teenager with acne. And suddenly, I could enjoy many of her qualities that I struggled with before. Um, her charisma, the fact that she was provocative, and again, so glamorous. But there was also so much more that I saw in my mother and then my father and the rest of the family. I realized I can see so much and understand so much more when I look at the world through my camera. And I decided actually during a visit to New York when I was 17 and visiting ICP museum and bookstore, I decided I want to be a photographer. And I always want to see more and feel more and understand more. Um, so I did the Israeli army for two years, and then I went to do my um, degree in Bezalel Academy of Art in Jerusalem, and went back to photographing my mom, because at first I tried to do like stupid artsy things. Um, and while I was a student, a few images of my first body of work that was then published as the book Closer um, by Chronicle Books um, begin to happen. I switched to color and continued photographing my mother. And photography definitely brought us closer. There was a reason why I, I titled the book this word. We understood more about each other. The time that was spent taking the pictures and looking at the pictures and arguing and fighting over the pictures, um, even I felt like I can travel in time with my photography and photograph things. Sometimes in my photography, I see signs of things that didn't happen yet. It's like I go into my unconsciousness. And sometimes I photograph moments from the past like this. A mother drives me in the rain where I remembered how my mom used to drive me to piano lessons and how intense it was, um, the pressure she put on me to find something I'm good at. And photography is, is an elusive medium, like many art forms. You never know when you're going to find the good picture. And I remember trying to take this picture of my mom as like the Snow White Queen at home and in the studio. And then finally, after 
a few weeks and some failed images. Um, I took this one snapshot, well, a snapshot I worked for for a few weeks uh, in the hair salon, and, and suddenly the good picture came. And I started to expand uh, to the rest of the family, uh, to my father. But I, I also learned that different people have different limits. Um, so it was great when my mom opened up to me uh, like an open book and enjoyed even the performative element of being photographed. Um, my dad had different personality and more limits. And within those limits, I had to beg and push and respect and understand and find the line between the two. Um, this is my husband, Iran, kissing me goodnight. Um, and I met Iran in Jerusalem in art school. He, was, uh, he comes from a family of photographers, so he was very knowledgeable about photography. Um, and for our third date, he brought me his grandmother's darkroom and he was always walking around naked, willing to be photographed. Um, and I thought, this is going to be my husband. Um, so he became a big part of my work. And he still is a big part of my work. And he helps me with the equipment, the lighting, the editing, many elements. Iran and I. And the more I photographed and saw the reaction of people to my work. Um, I began to, I mean, when you start to photograph, you don't really know what you're doing. I began to understand what it is that I'm doing and what, what I want to talk about. And I felt and I still do feel that my work comes from the very personal, the things I know the best and I love most, where I can go and dive deeper and deeper in order to talk about themes that are very universal. Um, actually, everything, I, I feel that everything exists within the microcosm of, of, of a family. Uh, the love, the hate, the jealousy, the support, the compassion, everything is there. And I find that when I go to my life and to the life of the people around me, there is, it's almost unlimited what I, what I can get there. Iran's chest, and this is still from closer. The close-ups actually developed after I moved to New York. Um, so I moved here in '94. It was very hard um, coming. Being an immigrant is a difficult thing, and it doesn't go away in a way. It just changes. Um, and I had nothing to photograph. I was first here on my own because Iran couldn't come with me. And so I just zoomed and zoomed and zoomed on my body. And then when he joined me on Iran's body, and for a while, I saw everything in close-ups. This is an image from an editorial shoot. And I will go back to it. Um, it's, it's my first assignment for magazines. Uh, and I did photograph my own body for that, but it managed to be as personal to me. So I wanted to show how some images can exist both in my personal work and the editorial work. And you can see all the close-ups, which is a theme that comes and goes in my work the need to come closer and closer and closer. But then further back, to look at my parents as a couple, um, which I think, for me, was only possible with photography. After Closer, I was already here, and I had um, a difficult two years in my life where I um, suffered from excruciating back pain. My husband suffered from addiction, and our marriage got into a crisis. But I managed to photograph some of it, um, the pain and the crisis, 
Um, this is First Tears Over Another Man. And I think it was, it was mainly possible because Iran pushed me to keep photographing. And I think that in a way he knew that if he'll stay a part of my photography, he will stay a part of my life. But it also became, as I said, with my mom, it was another way of communication for me and for her, another language we spoke. Um, at this time in my life, the time of crisis, photography almost became sometimes the only communication. Um, I would take pictures and it would be something we did some, somehow together, even on days we didn't speak to one another. Um, and I would sometimes also, what then became their title, I would title them for Iran, the small prints that came from the lab. Like this was an image I took and titled um, for him. Iran is stoned here. I am laying on him, and I wrote to him, and if I don't get enough attention. And I learned more and more as I was photographing it that the things that we do for the camera, the staged photographs, are not more or less honest or genuine than the snapshots. And I learned that snapshots can tell a lie, and the staged images where I have lights and um, when people do things for the camera, it can sometimes bring more honesty out of them. The fact that with photography you create this stage for people to step into um, is meaningful and brought a lot of truth to my work. Um, Iran's blaming guys. Um, my second book, so I was, after I moved to New York, I, I was already dancing in Israel, um, but I, I was actually a professional belly dancer, not ballet, belly, <laughs> Middle Eastern, uh, for 15 years, and it was my main income in the first eight or nine years here in New York. Um, this book was a result of two years of work, which I think was cut too short because I got pregnant and had to cut it short. I mean, Closer and Mother, my third book, were each a decade of work. And it's my less successful book. Closer did very well, Mother did very well, Diary of a Dancer, maybe because the themes were not as universal as my other work and people couldn't see themselves in this work, didn't, didn't do as well. Still, it's my body of work, where I photographed my journey as a belly dancer um, with a different um, panoramic camera. I'm still shooting with film back in that time. Um, first, I photographed a lot of self-portraiture of the before and after. Um, and then I wanted to start photographing also the moments where I'm dancing with and for the people. And this was also challenging. Uh, at first, I would hand the camera to strangers, which didn't work well for me. Um, and eventually, I had to bring Iran, my husband, to help me again. Um, in what became some of the images he took, he took for me, and I would place the camera and give him a sign. And some, I told him, you know, when you're a belly dancer, you never know how you're going to continue after the first or second song. You will, can end up on a table holding a baby in a hummus plate, and it's hard to then continue to direct him. <coughs> so I told him, just take your pictures, take the camera, take your pictures. And so 17 of the images in Diary of a Dancer are Iran's. And the rest are mine. And they move from the public to the private in, in the life of a dancer, especially a belly dancer. I remember this kid because he told me I look good for my age. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all, on, only 30 or something. An Israeli wedding. and the cover of the book. 
waiting to be picked up by my agent. And a sight only belly dancers know, the end of the show and the one dollar bill on the floor being, how do you call it, swipe? Swept. Swept, thank you. I'm still improving my English. Um, moving on to the editorial work, which is um, a, a big part of what I do today. It started about 20 years ago. Um, actually, with this is my first assignment. So um, I, I was belly dancing for a living and doing, now getting into the fine art world was really, really difficult. I was chasing the galleries and really I feel like I shed blood and tears. And it is still difficult to move in the ladder of the fine art world. It's elitist, it can be cold, and has rules that I didn't understand. I don't understand some of them today. Um, so it was tough, and eventually I got my break and got a gallery representation, Rico Moresca, and started showing my work here and in Europe in solo shows. Um, I won the Guggenheim, the Infinity Award, and things got better. Um, and then the, the magazine world come to me, came to me. Um, but I was, I was really nervous to take on assignments. I mean, the way that I was working allowed for, and, and I think many artists relate to that, for a lot of mediocre images and, and bad weeks where I didn't create anything significant. And so I was, I was very nervous to have to produce good work when I have an hour or a day with someone for the magazine. Um, and I said no a few times for a couple of years. And then at some point, I decided that I can't continue to be afraid. And I just have to do it the same way I came to New York and didn't know anyone. Um, and so I decided to say yes. But I was still scared. So this was Big Magazine. Um, they wanted me to do a fashion shoot. And I convinced them with kind of the excuse of my creative freedom as an artist, which was just my insecurities, to let me use the body as a space for fashion. And they agreed. And I shot this story. Um, and I got paid. I was like, OK. I stayed alive. I did this image that ended up in Closer. I even got an ad campaign for Selfridges, a theme campaign. But you can see I'm still kind of in my comfort zone. I'm shooting myself or my friends at home um, and, and kind of getting used to the idea of working on assignment. And then W Magazine commissioned me to go to New Mexico and photograph um, Agnes Martin, the painter. And I had to become a, a, a real photographer, <laughs> like rent the light, hire an assistant, have the call sheet, all the scary, scary things. Um, I went to New Mexico, and it was an amazing experience after getting over my fears, um, meeting Agnes and getting to know her. It was really like going back to school. And also, I, and I began to get more, more work and more assignments, but also it was interesting to, for me to try to apply the qualities of my work, the intimacy, the closeness, the intensity, to people I don't know and I sometimes only have, like in Dame Edna's case, 15 minutes with. But I felt that even though it was scary, I'm learning a lot, I'm learning technically a lot, I'm working with different assistants and learning about light and cameras and lenses, and I am expanding the rooms of the photographer in me um, and learning to relate to people and to approach people in different ways in order to relate to them and to photograph them in the way that will bring some of the qualities of my personal work into assignments work in magazines. So for a while, I worked on different, different things. Um, I would photograph artists um, and this is the blogger Emily Gould, and, and became more, this was my first, yeah, this was my first New York Times magazine cover. Um, then I did this assignment that, um, I mean, I'm running really fast in time, so this was like 10 years, um, 
in between I got represented by an agency and tried to also do some of the bigger money jobs, the fashion, beauty, celebrities, which wasn't so much where I was very good at and um, not something I, I it, it was just not me, not talent wise and I, I wasn't the right fit. Um, this was a celebrity shoot, it's Dave Grohl and his mom, but the context was family. So it was rock stars and, and their mothers. <coughs> John Legend. And I began to realize what I'm not good at, that is painful. <laughs> we want to think that we're good at anything, but also what is right for me. Another story that made me understand this was this story for Esquire magazine about a father that is devoting his life to take care of his son who has a locked-in syndrome, which was a difficult assignment. I spent three days with the family, uh, but didn't shoot a lot, also because it, there was a problem with a lot of light and had to be done very delicately. Um, and I even got another ad campaign. I don't do a lot of advertisement. Usually what ad campaign wants, the kind of images they want are more sleeky and glamorous and pretty. And, uh, but this was a, a good one because it was for Vaseline. Um, it was all real people and real stories. Mainly it was photographing 225 people telling me the stories with their choice of what part of their skin they want to show and how parts of their skin represent who they are. So a lot of people, great stories, interesting choices of how people wanted to be photographed. And so I was right for, for that ad campaign. And again, I realized that it's good for me to be sent to the real people, the real stories, the families. Um, and then I met John Milter, who is for me maybe one of the most important photo editors I worked with. She was, um, today she's the uh, photo director in The New Yorker. Um, back then, 2012, or I think I met her in 2011. She was the deputy of Kathy Ryan, the photo director of the New York Times Magazine. And she saw the early work of Mother that I'm going to show later. And she really understood what it is that I'm good at. What is my work? What is my voice as a photographer? And she gave me the right stories as covers for the New York Times Magazine. So not only did she give me the right stories, but they also got great exposure. And I think that since then, these are the stories that I've been doing, stories about families and emotions. And my friends make fun of me that I'm the sensitive photographer, because if there is a sensitive situation um, with people dying or different things, they will send me. Um, this was a boy who was diagnosed as a pre-psychotic um, and it's a controversial diagnosis in the medical world. And I was sent to spend um, three days with him and the family. We couldn't show his full face. Um, and I, I, I really loved, fell in love with this kid. Um, a story that this is the writer she wrote about her family dealing with a mental illness of her father. A story, it, it sounds like um, ancient history now, Anthony Weiner running for mayor. <laughs> but this was Anthony Weiner running for mayor before the second sexting and the third. Um, and it was an intense story because of some disagreement, I would say, um, with how to approach this shoot. And um, it's a long story. I did go to their home and saw a loving family. Uh, but after this story, I set new rules for shooting for magazines. And so now I want full transparency when I'm coming to photograph families. 
I mean, if I ever have to work as a paparazzi, I'll do it. I'll go out and I'll catch pictures of whatever it is. Maybe it will be okay. But if I'm invited into people's homes, I want to make sure they know and agree to what it is that I want to photograph them. And I have a list that I make with the um, magazines and I share the list with them. And I even, so about 10 years ago, I switched to digital. And in some moments that are very sensitive, I will take one picture and share it with the subject. And if they don't approve, I'll delete it right away. Um, so I, I love digital. Um, um, and I can talk about it more later. Uh, a story I shot for people about this adopted uh, young woman and her family. Her and her uh, disabled adopted ad uh, sister. A story about Alzheimer. A story that started for one magazine and ended up in another, which is the only one for me that I shot this way. I photographed Kaylee Stapleton's family. Um, Easy is an autistic and, and um, severely autistic and violent um, teen. And her mother tried to commit suicide and kill Easy. Um, yeah, intense story. And again, a difficult shoot. So I was sent to photograph Easy, the father, and her siblings. And, and Easy is very unpredictable. She can range for being sweet and, and come to violent tantrums. So that was, that was challenging. And it was for People magazine. And then New York sent me to jail to photograph the mother, which was also really hard, sad, and much, much shorter than the time I thought I would have with her. I think it was a 17-minute shoot. And she couldn't. She had to leave. happy story <laughs> about a child with epilepsy. Um, but him and his family won the battle of using a medication that is made out of marijuana. It really helped him a lot, changed his life. From something like 30 seizures a day, he is now getting maybe one every two or three weeks. And he's a fully active, great student. Um, and I photographed the family. It's a, it's a really success story. A transgender man who gave birth to a baby. We couldn't show the images of him breastfeeding the baby, but that was one of those times where I took a picture and showed it to Evan. And when he disapproved it, I deleted it and took it again until he was OK with it. A father to a transgender young woman for um, Men's Health magazine. So you can see that I shoot for magazines that usually wouldn't hire me. Uh, and they hire me when those specific stories come up. Another father to two disabled uh, boys. And it's surprising to me how sometimes people will open up to me a complete stranger, maybe even more than they will open up to a family or a friend. A cover story uh, for New York about a woman who openly spoke about the fact that she wouldn't keep her pregnancy had she known her son was having the disease that he has. He has a lung disease. Um, and for some bu bureaucrat the kind of failure. She didn't get the results. This is my viral picture. <laughs> it's nice to be viral and get a lot of attention. It was uh, the story went completely viral, and so did the photograph. It was shot for the fiction section uh, for the New Yorker magazine working with Joanna Milter, and uh, got a lot of attention. 
was in the cover of PDN. A mother raising her baby in jail. Oh, I traveled to Washington State and spent a day in a life with this woman in jail and her baby. Another shot for the New York Times Magazine. And um, recently, I've been shooting more uh, women who have been through uh, <coughs> sexual assault. This is Donna Palomba and telling very bravely and openly her story. <coughs> She's here with her daughter. And Ambra Gotinez was one of Harvey Weinstein's victims. Last body of work, Mother, which is my third book, available in Amazon, buy my book. Um, so I uh, got pregnant in 2003 with a boy and a girl, twins. And um, motherhood really changed me. It changed me and my work. Um, here I am in what seems to be like a very quiet, serene moment, but I will never forget how the nurse was yelling at me. <laughs> and she was like, Miss Karuji, we have a high risk delivery here today. Can you please, because I'm like with the IV and I'm trying to put the, I found this beautiful medical light that you can see coming from above. And I'm with the tripod and the self timer. And I was trying, <laughs> I was trying to explain the nurse and I think it's true for all of us, professional and non-professional photographers, that we want to take pictures because we lose moments all the time. And we are never as young as we were a day ago or 10 years ago. And we lose people. And we move from one place to another. And we want to hold on to something. And that, that's why I photograph. I want to hold on to moments. And with the moments that I capture, I want to reach out to other people and connect. And have them feel my pain or joy and feel theirs. But the nurse was really not into this artsy conversation. <laughs> and she grabbed the camera and gave me an oxygen mask. <laughs> um, so it was like a funny moment. So, but as I said, I became a mother of two. This, my husband took this picture. I, was, I had an emergency C-section. And um, I was really overwhelmed with every kind of emotion experienced to its extreme when I became a mother. The love, the joy, um, really my children are the best. Being their mother is, is the best, most significant thing in my life. But also the pain and the frustration and the change of my body while my husband's body didn't change at all. Um, and I was suddenly photographing out of anger. I became a little angry and frustrated and opinionated, and I wanted to show everything I could about being a mother. I couldn't include everything here today, but it was really important for me to photograph it all. I hated the celebrity pictures we see six days after they give birth when everything is perfect and the mother is thin and perfect. And I hated all the Madonna and child pictures I've seen during my art school days and just in general. And I wanted to tell a more complex, layered story of, of being a mother, of raising children. And as before, I was looking for the everyday dramas with kids, you don't have to look much because every day is a drama. <laughs> and cutting the bangs is a drama with words like I hate you and emotions and anger. Um, it's even, it's an intensified kind of reality to be a mother of children. The bathtub, again, a big drama and crying and tears and a lot of emotions. And I also had to become a very quick photographer um, with kids. The wonderful gift of photographing kids is that they don't put on facades. They don't, they're just who they are. But everything happens quickly. You have to capture it quickly. Um, and, and also, the guilt that I felt about taking some of those pictures, 
um, even if I take one or two, which in, in mo most of those cases is one or two frames, in those one or two seconds, I'm not a mother. I'm not picking them up or wiping their nose. Um, and also, will it be OK to show this work? Um, and I did edit out all the nudity I took of the kids from the book and somehow continued trying to tell the story, my story, and all the moments that build it. I, I was thinking my son was having fun here. Obviously, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> After birthday parties, that many times end with tears. My daughter sitting in her father's lap. Halloween, and um, I started to shoot more outside, I think, for a few reasons. One, as I mentioned before, that the kids don't change their behavior when we go out the door. They still can say that they love or hate or cry or it's all the same. And also, I think my kids have been in America since 95, but having children here being a part of the public school they went to, PS41, really connected me. I think it became home after I tell my kids, I gave birth to two roots. You are my two roots to America. Um, so I started shooting more outside, feeling that this is home for me. So this is in McDonald's, an important moment in my life where my daughter, for the first time, closed the door when she went to the bathroom. And she didn't let me go in with her. And she said, Mom, leave. She closed the door. I took one frame and stood there crying, thinking about the day she goes to college, um, which was crazy. I'm there in McDonald's. She's just in the bathroom, and I'm crying, holding the camera. But I had this one frame. A self-portrait of myself as a mother. I felt like I can dress nicely. I can put on the makeup. I will never be the same. I'm, I'm always a mother. I'm always thinking about the dinner, the school. The, I'm just not the same person, good or bad. I don't know. My son in Toys R Us. And the horror of brushing the hair every night. They said they will never talk to one another again. It was hard to shoot the nights. The nights were hard <laughs> with little kids. Um, and to photograph them was tricky as well. And I was. For the first time, I think until mother, I was mainly influenced by photographers. When I was younger, my three goddesses were Nan Golden, Sally Mann, and Mary Ellen Mark. Um, and then also people like Emmett Gowin and Richard Willingham. But more and more, I found inspiration in the parents around me and their honesty and openness, and in stand-up comedy. So to me, um, Louis C.K. stand-up, talking about being a father was one of the main inspirations for this book. Um, and some of those moments are directly inspired by things that he said, mainly talking about how you are more judgmental before you have kids, and how you see things completely differently when you have kids. Um, things you promised yourself you'll never do. Of course, you're doing like taking sides when my kids are fighting. Bad mom. Or dragging them in the street when they're seeing the beauties of the world because you're rushing and you're late and we have to get to school and yelling at them. I mean, I think being a mother showed me the best and the worst in me. But at least the best is there. And it showed me more of my kids and myself, but more of the world. So 
when I have bad days and I'm overwhelmed by being a mother and being a photographer, I have to remind myself that being a mother made me see more and feel more and understand the world better around me. And I tell my kids, you made me a better photographer, so it's okay. So um, the question is, if you didn't hear it, is how I managed to take the pictures that I'm in. I remember to repeat the question. Um, so first of all, I did mention that I studied drama and theater. <laughs> and I'm mentioning it now because, as you said, the images are, I don't know if to call it staged because it sounds maybe like more of a negative connotation, but they're, I'm going back and acting parts of my life. Um, technically, what I do is um, a few things. The camera is either on a tripod in this image. Um, I just, we went to a friend and I told my husband, I had a light that he held the camera on a tripod and I told him, let's stop every five minutes and take a few pictures, like giving myself an exercise. And so every five minutes we stopped and in long the way they're like good moments, bad moments. I put the tripod, he held the light, and my kids got into a fight, and he knows already that he can continue pressing the shutter or put it on a self-timer when it takes 30 pictures, one after the other, something I can do with digital. And then I will copy maybe a few from the card. Sometimes I also have my husband or one of my children hold the camera, and I tell them, they know how to follow the frame, so I train them, <laughs> poor kids. Um, and sometimes it's just a self-timer. Um, and there is this element of performing, maybe something we do feel um, less here for the kids because they were really fighting, but I, I am aware of the camera, and I kind of perform part of my life for the camera. So this is also, um, and the question is about how precise the frames are. With digital, I do, I get a sense, like I have my husband or one of my kids take the picture, turn the tripod to me. I see the frame and I adjust it. And also there are many bad frames and bad missed opportunities that, you know, that, I, that are just not here when working like this. And also, I got better over the years. <laughs> so the question is if I can still photograph my kid as much as I did for mother. Answer is yes, surprisingly enough, um, even more. First of all, they're not as little, so they, they can you know, have longer sessions. Um, my son thinks that everything his mom does is great and that mom is the best photographer in the world and you know he's happy to help me and my daughter is a hardcore feminist so even though she can be difficult and give me a hard time and she can she supports my career with no limit so she not only and she doesn't love to be photographed but she knows it's my career and what I do um, and and she she will help me there. Also bring many of her friends, which is something they both do, into my work. So I've been photographing them now, but the work includes many more kids. Also the focus of their lives is now social. They moved from this little battle of mom kids. Um, and so the work becomes also about teen in America. And they I mean, every once in a while, they're like, Mom, not now. Um, my son had a girlfriend for just a little bit, and, and they were sitting in the living room, and he saw me like coming in the hallway with the <laughs> camera, and he was like, Mom, go straight back to your room right now. <laughs> so sometimes I get, I get, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys at home. Thank and thank you for being here.